It's just amazing. I was with a friend recently, and we were talking about the generous hearts that build churches and uh, people that give toward the church, and it's just an amazing story. And, and he said to me, how often do you celebrate generosity in your church? I said, I guess randomly from time to time. He said, uh, how often do you celebrate your worship team? I said, most weekends. He said, you should celebrate generous hearts most weekends too. Because the reality is giving is a gift and worship is a gift and mercy is a gift and serving is a gift. And so to everybody that brings what they have to this house, one more time, church, let's appreciate and celebrate. It's a gift. Um, a guy came up to me after the 10 a.m. service last week, Ash Bell. How awesome was it to have Ash Bell here? Just another father in the faith, someone that's walked a journey, uh, a road that we now kind of walk in the, in the path of in some ways, stand on the shoulders of, some would say. And uh, just an amazing moment as he prayed over ministry families in the 8 a.m. service and then over business people in the 10 a.m. And one of the guys in business, first time in church, came to me after this 10 a.m. service last week, caught me in the foyers. He said, hi, Dill, introduced himself. He says, my first time in church in a long time, and um, it was just great to be here today. And so we exchanged a few words. And then he said, you know, when I walked into the place this morning, he said, this phrase came to my mind, and I can't shake it. He said, it felt like God was just saying to me, these are my people. Like he hadn't been in church for a little while. It obviously, he had walked a bit of a journey and was trying to figure out where he fits in the story. And he said, but when I walked in here this morning, as it were last week, he said, I felt these words, these are my people. Like, have you ever felt that when you've walked into this room? Like against all odds, like you didn't plan it. You didn't, uh, you didn't even really know what was gonna happen as you moved to the North Coast, to my friends from out of town or overseas or you know, you just, you just moved you're in search of a lifestyle and God gives you life because he has something bigger for us than our own intentions. And this young man, an entrepreneur, a businessman, I just love those words. I haven't been able to shake them this whole week. These are my people. I wanna preach a message today titled, It Feels Like Home. It Feels Like Home. And I wanna speak about the power of belonging. Belonging is a powerful thing. Uh, we're told that is one of the... Uh, higher human needs, if you like. There are a few basic needs in humanity. Belonging is one of them. In fact, we're taught that we stunt our growth if we don't feel a sense of belonging in some certain environment. Let me give you an example. If, if you are in your own home or your own family and you feel like you're always overlooked or never heard or uh, it don't, it don't feature in the, in the family life, if, if that's your attitude, if you feel like you don't belong, you know what? You will grow up and you may put on a few pounds, but you won't grow upward in maturity. It's just a fact. Psychology tells us that if we don't feel a sense of belonging, we stunt our growth in a space. If you're in a business place and you feel like everything they're about is not what I'm about and I'm just whatever, you will feel like, it may not be entirely true, but you will feel like you've stunted seasons of growth purely because you don't feel like you belong. That statement, these are my people, it's a big statement. It's, it's an important part of everyday life. And so I'm guessing that there are some spaces in life where you feel like these are my people. Here are a few examples are. Perhaps it's golfing with your business mates. Like when you get onto that first tee box, a nice, beautiful spring morning, and you're on that tee box and everyone's sharing stories of the weeks gone by and getting ready to play off or tee off their first ball, and you have that feeling, oh, these are my people. That sense of belonging is so important for your growth in life. I just need to say that. Um, perhaps it's with your buddies around the bra. South African shout out. Anybody enjoy a little bra with a few buds, a few mates? And, uh, and then there's that moment as, as the bra gets lit and people are arriving and the rugby, like the pre-service shows on in the rugby and you're hearing them talk about the team that's gonna play and, and the next thing the meet comes out and everyone stands around and you're like, this is my people. These are my, any South Africans in the room enjoy a good bra? Are you the 10 a.m., you like a breakfast, not a bra? Uh, perhaps it's the bra with your buddies. Perhaps it's that 6 a.m. sweat session with your gym friends. I don't know, like maybe it's like you get into the gym in the morning and you've just been look, you're so looking forward to just clearing your headspace and sweating it out and being with those friends that have kind of, you know, been through the pain with you in the gym. It's like, these are my people. These are my people. You know, we all have a space and environment where we identify a sense of belonging. It's very important. Belonging is very important for our growth. Perhaps it's the side of a sports field. Parents with children in schools and 
You're back on the side of the sports field on the weekend, and some of you are thinking, oh, this is the worst day of my week. Some of us are thinking, this is amazing. I've been looking forward to seeing these people, watching these kids play. These are my people. I want to preach about how the church, friends, the gift of the church is that it should feel like home, and the power of it is belonging. Not behavior, not what we do. Belonging, who we are in each other's presence and with God. Perhaps your sense of belonging or your people is your small group. You can't wait to get to your small group. Shout out to every small group leader in this church. Thank you for creating environments midweek for people to come and feel a sense of belonging. Maybe that's your belonging. You can't wait to be there. As you sit down, as you sip a cup of coffee or tell a story, it's like, these are my people. This is my group. This is my crew. No matter what it is that you find your sense of belonging in, here's what I know to be true of your life. You need to belong. I need to belong, you need to belong. And we will meander through life looking for our people until we find them. Fact, uh, at school, I remember looking for my people and of course, being a young man with aspiring dreams and a bit insecure in my own sort of identity, I would look for the cool crowds. I think, I think, I think that's my people. And, and so I would look for a sense of belonging, albeit in the wrong spaces, we look for belonging. And I wanna tell you the church, the power of the church is it's a healthy place for you to belong. John chapter eight, let's turn there together and then I'll share a few thoughts around belonging. John chapter eight says this, verse 47, he who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong. Let me read that again and then give you some context. He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is not because God's not speaking, it's not because you're not spiritual enough, it's not because you haven't read your Bible enough times. There's something else at play. Jesus says, you do not hear because you simply do not belong. So we gotta pause at this point and say, what is this belonging thing? What does it mean for us as a church? The things Jesus said. Um, a little bit of context to the scripture. Jesus is in what the Pharisees would call a debate, but Jesus is calling it a conversation because he already knows the outcome, but they don't like it. And so Pharisees, high religious leaders of the day, are in a debate with Jesus, basically arguing that he can't be the son of God, that what he claims to be is not true, that he's blaspheming in the way that he claims it, and that he should be stoned, taken away, and thrown out. They don't like him. And Jesus is going, but why don't you like me? I've done nothing but good. You saw the miraculous signs. The man was healed. The woman went away from her adulterous ways and she was healed and set free, never to do it again. Like, why would you want to stone me? They're like, because you can't, because you, and he says, you misinterpret the father. They're like, we can't misinterpret. He says, in fact, you're slaves. And they argue with him. You can go and read it like, we're not slaves. Abraham was our dad. We free, we sons of Abraham, we free. So Jesus is like, okay, cool. Do you sin? then you're a slave. He's, he's like, he's not trying to win the argument, he's trying to help them see the high ground. You see, sometimes in the church, we're trying to win the argument, he's not arguing with us. He's inviting us into the high ground. When I talk about belonging, and as Jesus closes this conversation with this statement of, you, you, you hear because you don't belong, those who belong always hear, he's saying to this religious group, you've got so many religious debates, so many preferences, so many opinions, so many wish you could have, didn't, da, 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 da. you're missing the invitation, Jesus said. Your challenge, Pharisees, is hearing. You're listening to the wrong voices. Can you imagine the mad factor? Like, highest of the highest Jewish ruling council, and Jesus is going, ah, I just don't think you're hearing your father. Like, you're just, you're just missing the whole thing. They were frustrated with him. In a few moments before that, Jesus said, if you, if you know me, you know the Son, and the Son will set you free. In other words, you're seeing the Son of the true Father, and he goes on to say, you're listening to the wrong Father. They're like, Father Abraham's the wrong Father, Jesus said. No, not Father Abraham. The one he represents is the Father I'm talking about. And so you're listening to the Father of this earth, he says, the Father of lies. He goes on to say that the devil's native language is lies. You've believed, he says to the religious Pharisees, that there's certain things you have to do to belong to God. You've believed the lie. There's certain spaces you should frequent if you wanna be seen as 
holy and set apart. Can I talk to you, Link Church? Can we just have a conversation? He, he's inviting these Pharisees into a higher level of relationship with God, which is called belonging. Not just behavior, not just I show up at church, I do what's required, I read a bit of scripture, Jesus is going, I ah, know. But in doing all those things, you've actually believed some lies that there's stuff that you need to do to bring yourself to God. And he says, therein you, li- that you, you lack hearing because you've believed certain things that aren't about belonging. Let's talk about belonging this morning. It feels like home. I remember when we walked into uh, the Passion event in Atlanta, this beginning of this year, 2024. Myself, Jean, and George have, had arrived in Atlanta. We arrived there uh, to Atlanta City at 1 a.m. on New Year's Day this year, right? So we get there, it's New Year's. We're thinking, come on, let's go and find a place. We're gonna celebrate with some friends. We're gonna, I don't know, we're gonna, it's gonna be awesome. There's gonna be fireworks. We arrived in Atlanta. It was a bit dewy. It was a bit miserable. No one was on the streets. I couldn't even hear any nice live music. We're like foreigners. We're like walking around. We found some random place to have a snack. They weren't even celebrating New Year's. We're like, it's something wrong here. And so we kind of meandered as almost like foreigners in the city on a big celebration day. Nothing was happening. Went to sleep that night, woke up, went to the conference the next day to register. Conference started the next day. And as we registered, we walked into the arena. We're surrounded by 70,000 18 to 25 year olds. I'm 40, okay? Slight difference. And yet, as I walked into the conference of 70,000 18 to 25 year olds, I had this thought these are my people. I've been looking for them on the city streets. I've been checking out, is someone gonna blow up a fireworks and have some fun for the start of a new year? I like new year, I like the tick of the clock. No one doing anything. I feel, I feel like we're in the wrong, ah, oh, arena. These are my people. These are, Jesus is saying, church, you gotta get the privilege of belonging to the family of God. Therein lies the secret to hearing what God has to say. Some of us attend church when and how we feel like it and we're like, man, I'm just struggling to find my groove with God. I'm struggling to find my fits. I'm struggling to, and Jesus is like, you're struggling with many things. You're believing the, the small father, father with a small F. The fathers of this world, the opinions of this earth, the peer group pressures, the opinions of, the, of, of, of online, the, the headlines of the news. He's like, I only do what my heavenly father, capital F does. And half the challenges you're struggling to hear is that you're hanging out with the wrong father, father. You need to come and belong to my father. Be a part of my family. Let's talk about a few things it means to be a part of God's family. Can we do that this morning? Feels like home. Shout home. I hope that if you've just arrived, today will feel like home. And I wanna say to you, welcome. Welcome. You, you, you belong here. You belong here. Ephesians tells us with, the, with as much right as anybody to the name Christian because of the love of Jesus and the faithfulness of our God Father. You belong here. First thing about belonging, as Jesus would speak to, I believe, is we've got to be reminded that belonging means believing in Jesus, not behaving like a Christian. I just got to kind of put that disclaimer out there. Believing in Jesus, believing that he is enough for what we need. Uh, Let's read from Galatians to bring this to a bit of clarity. Galatians 3 verse 26 says, you're the sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Notice what it doesn't say. You're the sons of God through your regular participation in church services. You're the sons of God through the giving that you bring to the offering. You're the sons of God because of the three scriptures you read this week, the one that you have on your bumper and the one that's on your boardroom table. No, he says you're the sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Belonging is not about your behavior, it's about your belief. Do you believe that Jesus is the way, truth, and life? He's the Lord and you're his child. Now, it may sound obvious, you're like, Dill, we know this stuff. We've been in church for a little while. We've heard it all. Let me encourage you to consider it again. Let's go back to where Jesus started. You can't hear because you don't belong. Anyone in the room struggling to hear God for their season of life, don't worry of your hands. Anyone feeling like his voice goes a little bit dim? Maybe we just need to return to go, actually, The way I become a son of God is believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Maybe I've got a little bit comfortable in my own efforts to do things for him. Maybe I'm a little bit biased toward the things I know to do next for my life. Maybe I'm a little bit persuaded by friendships and expectations and family expectations. And maybe I actually just need to have a moment. Romans 10, 9, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from your own life and saved in to his family. 
And so every single time I declare these words of Jesus, speak Jesus, like when I'm singing that song, friends, it's my family anthem. You know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not what Link Church sings on a weekend. It's what the anthem of heaven sounds like 24-7. This name, Jesus, the holiness of God, the worthiness of God. You see, when we believe in Jesus, our faith through Christ in him, it sets us apart to belong to his family. And that's what Jesus is saying to the Pharisees. You're all about yourselves and what you know and who fits and who doesn't and what's been handed down in the traditions and the high ground that you hold. You got it all wrong, Pharisees. I'm the son and I relate to my dad. And if you believe in me, you will know him. And if you don't believe in me, you won't just not know him, you won't hear him. You gotta believe in Jesus, church. If I could say it to you in very ordinary words, I'd say we gotta learn to switch our sauce. Not the sauce you're putting on your burger at lunchtime today or your steak, the sauce of your life. Where does it originate? Where does it start from? We've got to switch the source. It's not from the opinion of man or the three thoughts that were discussed over the lunch meal. My source is my father. Jesus, when he gets baptized by God, God affirms him, says, this is my son who I love and I'm well pleased. Gives him three things, affection, affirmation, and identity in one moment. The three things we want most, one voice, father. So Jesus saying to the Pharisees, you, you, you're playing with everybody's opinions. You're multiplying all the laws of old. You're trying to get it all right. And you're missing the fact that there's a father that has a voice of your life that gives you affirmation, identity, and affection. And all I'm saying is you've got to belong. And they're saying, yeah, we do. He says, no, you don't. Because if you don't believe in me, you will not know him. You can agree church is good. You can get baptized if you want. You can, you, can, you, can, you can quote the lines. You can give money to good causes. Any do good causes in the room? I was chatting to a friend last week. He said, man, I'm just feeling so much more purposeful than my life because I've started giving to a nonprofit organization that are serving uh, c- communities that need food. I said, that's fantastic. He said, but I still feel a void. I said, of course you will. Because until you know your father's voice of your life, the affirmation that you need to live out your identity is not there. You can give to as many good causes as you want. Show up to as many church services. I'm just gonna preach with a bit of passion. The thing that shifts us from not sure if God's speaking to me or where I fit in to belonging, this is my home, this is my family, is very simple thought, to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. To hand over the driving force of my life to give him the will, to give him my time, to entrust him as Lord and Savior of my life. Not Lord and Savior of my marriage because I need help. Lord and Savior of my children. Okay, they ain't listening, God, and I wouldn't mind you stepping in. Or Lord and Savior of the church, God, I'd like it if you just turn Blink into a really exciting group of people on the weekend. No, Lord of my life, every part of my life, Jesus, I'm entrusting to you so that I can hear the Father's voice in every part of my life. He said, you do not be here because you do not belong. Some of us in this room today have got to be reminded that it's through faith in Jesus Christ that we belong, not through membership fees. (laughs) Not, Not through your school colors. Some people find their great sense of, these are my people when they put that old blazer on. Like shout out, if that's you, it's awesome. I think it's cool that you stand for your school, but you will not find belonging to God's family or hear his voice if every time you put your blazer on, that's as good as it gets. You gotta be reminded through faith in Jesus Christ, as good as these other communities are, there's a high ground called the church and belonging looks like believing in Jesus. Not because you're showing up in the right social circles, not even because you attend a church, because you believed in Jesus Christ. Second thing about belonging is that we're baptized into the family. I wanna speak about this for a bit. It's a powerful thought. Jesus said, you do not hear because you do not belong. Belonging looks like believing in Jesus and belonging looks like being baptized into a family. It says in Galatians, you're sons of God through faith in Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor English nor Afrikaans no Zulu, no Chinese, it's somewhere in there, I'm finding it just as we need to, God's telling us, if you belong to Christ, you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of Abraham. God said, I will make you a great nation. You will be blessed and you will bless the nations of the world, that's the promise to Abraham. And he says that those who are in Christ, who have believed in Jesus, are baptized into a family. Now, I gotta get quite specific here. You're not built into a family. 
my children were not built to become Yonachs. You know, like, like a Lego piece that you have to put together. Like, they all arrive in multiple pieces. I mean, I know I can feel like that as parents sometimes. It's like, where on earth is the headlights? But you know what I'm saying? It's like they're not a project. They're born into the family. They're, they're a full personality when they're born. Did you know that much? Of course, their prefrontal cortex is gonna take a little while to catch up and we're all on that page. But they're this beautiful personality born into my home. Mackenzie, Taya, Honor, and Joel, you're born into the Yonah home. You're family the day you arrived. You're family when you're in mom's tummy. We're family. They're not, they're not built to become a Yonah. They're born into the Yonahs. And yet when it comes to the church, we think, okay, welcome to Link Church. There's just a few things we're gonna have to work on before you can call yourself part of this family. Because I've noticed you sit on like the 10th row. Like 10th row is for like second rate family. I'd like to invite you in like top five rows. So I'd just like to come a few rows forward. I'm speaking to my friends who enjoy the back rows. Your family, just relax, it's an analogy. But we start to work on people's lives. We start saying, you know, I've noticed still, they weren't at church the last three times. I'm I'm just not sure that's good for them. Look, I know it's not good for them, but that doesn't mean they're not family. I I know not being in church on a Sunday is unhelpful for our own spiritual lives, but it it doesn't mean that when I look you in the eyes and I haven't seen you for six months because you've been traveling and building and trying to figure life out, that when you walk through these doors, I'm like, oh, buddy, we need to talk. Oh, my goodness, but you have drifted from family. I look you in the eyes and say what? Welcome home. Because when you're born again by the Spirit of God, you're the family. You can't fall out the family. You can't fall in the family. You were baptized into the family. Now, also, baptism, I'm talking about water baptism. Water baptism is a proclamation of this baptism that I'm speaking about, which is a baptism in His presence, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The baptism of water is me showing others that I've trusted in God and my life is now His. It's a proclamation. I don't believe you have to be water baptized to go to heaven. Whoo, pin drop. I believe you have to be born again in the Spirit of God to go to heaven. Water baptism tells my friends, family, and anyone else involved that I have been born again in the Spirit of God and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. My life is not my own, it's His. I'm proclaiming the work that God has already done in my life. Should it go together? Yes, I believe in it. Is baptism important for the church? Yes, I believe it is. But it's more like a wedding ring. It points back to a marriage that I have with God right now. It's not everything I need. It just tells people I have given my life to Christ. So when I talk about baptism, I'm not talking about, have you been water baptized? We need to check on you. I'm talking about, have you given your life to Jesus, stepped into the presence of God and realized you have been baptized into, born again into a family? Welcome home. You know, in Israel, in the Old Testament, the temple was a place of worship for God's people. It was a place of encounter for God's presence. The temple was built, it was a beautiful temple. We know it's been built and destroyed twice. And if you go to Israel today, you can go off site and they're busy preparing the building blocks for what they believe will be a third temple. You can go and see where they're preparing the blocks to build the third temple. It's fascinating. Those blocks are tons, tons, like tens of tons, hundreds of tons heavy, all right? And they prepare the blocks off site, why? God told them in the Old Testament, when you prepare to build my temple, all the work will be done off-site, the blocks will be prepared, so when that block comes to be laid in its rightful place, the scriptures tell us not another hammer or chisel should be put to it. Why is that powerful? Because the temple in the New Testament, Paul tells us we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the indwelling place of God, which means that we are not a work in progress when we give our lives to God. It has been prepared off-site at the cross of Calvary. You and I have been chiseled by grace, put into place, so when God adds you to a local church family, you don't feel like, I'm not really sure where I fit. That could be a journey, but I'll tell you this, you're family from day one, and you have the perfect fit for this church. Dil, my background's a bit different to yours. I was in like the Catholic church. I got some friends in this church that did the Catholic thing growing up. And it's like, man, it's a little bit like I'm still figuring some stuff out. It's a little bit different. I'm not sure like we're baptism and that one. And it all fixed together. I said, don't worry, buddy. You are perfectly fit for the journey God has for you in this church. We'll figure out the details. But the construction has been put down at the cross of Calvary. That's where he constructed your life. And so when we take communion, we remind ourselves That's the work that's finished. So I can put this cup down and I can step into the family and not another hammer or chisel must be added to my life. 
Will he sanctify my heart? Will he awaken me to greater things? Will he show me what greater levels of obedience look like? Of course, why would I follow God if there wasn't more? I'm a son, I'm walking into an inheritance, but the work of the cross to prepare me fit for this family is done. Tap your neighbor with confidence and say, welcome home. Are there days when my children act in certain ways that I think that's just not who we are? Are there moments where I see little things that are said? My little guy that will be having a random game of fun and a statement will come out and I'll be like, whoo, that is not from our house, bro. That is, that is, I don't need to know where that comes from, but that's not us. That's not mom, that's not dad. That's some friend that you're trying to impress, father with a small F, some authority in your life, at least perceived authority that you're trying to impress. And so you're throwing it out in our home and seeing if it works. And you realize it doesn't work in this home because we're not impressed by words like that. And so over time we realize what is the family's way? Well, at Link Church, we're a generous family. We, we celebrate vision in the future. We're a, we're a loving family. We, we, we're not scared to give somebody a hug. We had a meet and greet on Tuesday night. It was amazing. We had like 40 people join our church, first time ever, around a dinner table. It's just incredible to see who God is adding to the life of this house. And I get a chance to meet all of them. And of course, some of them I've encountered in the foyers. Some of you I've seen in the foyers. And I'll say, hi, just remind me of your name. And others I'll introduce for the first time. And I've got into the habit now, and it's so against my character. God is teaching me. I've got into the habit when someone says, hi, my name is, let's call him Brian. I'm like, come here, Brian. Welcome home, Brian. He's like, whoa, wow, too much too soon, bro. I'm like, you don't know how much this means for me to be hugging you, buddy. I'm, I'm like, I am the chosen frozen at Define. You know, like, grew up as like, I won't sing. I won't hug anybody. Turn around and give three people a high five. He can forget it, bro. I'm gonna sit right over here. This is my chair. We are baptized into the family of God. You belong here, so be family. Be family. Take a seat. My children don't ask me for permission to open the fridge. So why are you waiting for me to give you permission to take communion when you've had a hard week, you know God needs to break through for your life. It's, it's right in front of you and you can peel it back as a family and say, I'm back in my home, I'm back in my house. I was baptized into this family. It feels like I fell out the family, but I'm still in it. It feels like this week I made some decisions that put me outside of God's will, but the work of Christ cannot be undone. Preach. And so I'm family. And so be family. Isn't it true sometimes we would say to our children, why are you being like that? Like, why are you, why are you, be, why are you being like that? Like, why are, you, why are you acting like the world's against you and like, like no one cares about you in this home and like, you know, you're standing like, sometimes kids have that moment, they go and stand in the distance like, I don't wanna be around any of you. Why are you behaving like an illegitimate child? You're family. Hey, we do that too. Church, I had, um, someone said something. I don't wanna talk to him. I don't wanna talk to him. Hey, you're the one losing out. We're family. Figure it out. Have a conversation. Get two or three people in the room. Bible gives us pretty clear indications to how we resolve family issues. Let's, let, let's do it. Because while you're standing at a distance going, I just don't know that 2024 is ever gonna be my year. And, I don't know, man. Like, I've been kind of linked for a little while. No one's even said hi to me. You say hi to somebody else. Be family. Be family. This seems to be everybody else's story. It's amazing. Their lives seem to be blessed and flourishing. When last did you give? God works with sowing and reaping. It's a family way. Give. Watch what he does. Be family. Why are you standing at a distance, church? The invitation is to come in. Be a part of it. Take a seat at the table. You do not hear because you do not belong. And some of us, and maybe I'm just speaking to my friends online, are struggling to hear God, not because you don't mean well, not because you don't wanna believe that God is good and has a story for you, but you're just not being family. Like you haven't taken ownership of this home, of what it means to bring yourself to this moment, to add value, to serve somebody, to show up. That's what families do. And when we do that, when we become more like family, when we realize we were baptized into not a functional Christianity, a family, we carry the weight of that home together. And there are different weights and there are different responsibilities and 
I don't expect from my kids what I bring to that home. I'm, I've been around for a little bit longer. I'm going to do a little bit more than them. But you're family. Be family. Pick up your clothes. Amen. I was just waiting for an amen. Curtis, honestly, the whole day, been working. Pick up your clothes. Let me keep going. Wash the dishes. Huh? Go to bed. Okay, anyway. <laughs> But it's what Ash was talking about last week, and he so beautifully used that analogy of that little dog that had an Instagram account and all that, that was jumping around and doing its thing because he knew if he did everything, he gets the chow. And then the dog grew up to realize, I don't have to jump around. I just got to wait for the command. When my master says eat, it's time to eat. And we're, we're running around in this, hey, pressing, da, 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 in the world out there, bumper sticker, this one didn't work. Let me try a new one. Just be family. You're receiving a church? It feels like home, the power of belonging. We are not a victim church. We are a victorious church. I know that you have days where you feel like a victim. I have them too. Most Mondays, I second guess my calling for a brief moment in time. But I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. I'm victorious. When I sing the songs of Jesus, I'm singing the songs of victory. Amen. Here's a question for you, church. Where does your heart feel most at home? Where does your heart feel most at home? Because if it's any form of community outside of the local church, there will be a lack of hearing what God has to say. I'm not saying other communities don't have their place, but if where you feel most at home is not in the local church, the question has to be asked, well, is it time to put your faith in Jesus and change the source? And is it time to realize that I've been baptized into a family? a group of people on a mission together about the Father's business and I best get on what God is doing. Therein lies the secret to his whisper. And number three, let's build a life that glorifies him. Part of belonging, it's what I've been speaking about, is just choosing to build a life that glorifies him. I was with some business guys up in Joburg this week, Pretoria. I got invited to sit in on a business forum. Very inspiring group of guys. Uh, Mono Bosov that did our business breakfast invited me in. He oversees a group, a group called C12. It's a, a kind of Christian network that came out from the States and is rapidly taking uh, root in our country. It's an amazing story. You'll hear more about it in time to come. But he invited me to come sit in a room, and I sat in a room with 16 CEOs of multiple-figure turnover companies. Uh, they, they were very inspiring, to say the least. They are contributing significantly to the economy of our country, let's just say that. And I sat in a room full of these guys and it was interesting because the conversation started with how's your marriage and how's your family and how's your church life and there were all these facets to a business person that you don't often think are there, like they're humans and they need people around them and they have marriages that walk through stuff together and they've got employees and staff and, and so we went on this journey. Then they spoke about turnover, increasing turnover and of course, all of you are like, what was the secret, Dill? You know? And then they spoke about other things. And at the end of the day, they said, all right, when we get up from this table, what's the goal? I thought, that's a good question. We've spoken about marriage, family, turnover, profits, church. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so fired up. You have to hold me back when I get up from this table. I want to know what their goal is. And one guy says, sorry, can I just say it? It's never changed. I said, oh, I'm like, I'm waiting. He says, to just get on with my dad's business to just get on with the family business? Can we believe in Christ to know that we belong to the story of God? Can we realize we've been baptized into the family? We're not victims. We're not illegitimate children. We are the sons and daughters of the living God. And then can we just get on with building the Father's business? Sometimes it's simpler than you think. Sometimes it's as simple as me saying, let's be about the Father's business and somebody in the room going, that's what's missing in my business. It's not his. That's what's missing in my Wednesday is I'm thinking about it through my own lens, not his. It's like we come around the family table on a weekend and then we spread into the world during the week and we do our father's business. What Jesus is saying to the Pharisees, you're all about your own business. I'm about my father's business. And the thing with you Pharisees is you actually don't belong. You signed up to every committee. You're part of every club. You know every story. You've quoted every scripture, but you simply don't belong. What does that mean, Jesus? You don't know what it's like to believe in your father or hear his voice or do his work. And I think that's the invitation of the church. I'd love you to stand with me. I love it in Romans 14, verse eight, it says, if we live, 
we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. My marriage, whether it's up or whether it's down, belongs to the Lord. My children, whether they're walking perfectly or walking at a bit of an angle, they belong to the Lord. Whether we live or die, whether it's going well or it's going poorly, we were born again by believing in Christ. We were baptized into the family of God and everything we do belongs to the Lord. So build a life to the glory of His name. One more story. Have you heard of the name Nicky Cruz? He wrote a book called Run, Baby, Run. It was the first book my mom gave me when I got saved, Run, Baby, Run. Nicky Cruz became the leader of a New York gang in the 60s called the Mau Maus. You read about the Mau Maus, you'll stop reading about the Mau Maus. They were dangerous to say the least. Nicky Cruz fought his way through life until he finally got the position of head of the Mau Maus, probably the most feared position in New York gangsterism at the time. And so here's Nicky Cruz in this elite gangster status of the Mau Mau's. And here comes a knock on his door one day by a guy by the name of David Wilkerson. He was a preacher in the area. He was doing a crusade and he was going door to door inviting people to the crusade. Comes to Nicky Cruz's door. Nicky opens the door. He says, what do you want? I'd try and do it, but I wouldn't do it justice. Say, what, do you, what do you want, man? And uh, David Wilkerson said, I'm doing a crusade. I'd love you to come be my friend. He said, listen, my friend, I'm gonna give you three seconds to get out of my presence before I slam this door and beat you up. So door slams. David Wilkinson's standing outside. He takes a big breath. Hmm, that wasn't according to plan. Let's go again. A little bit harder this time. Opens the door. Yo, man. <laughs> he said, I thought I gave you three seconds to get out of my presence. Pulls out a flick knife. You can go and read the story. Pulls out a flick knife. He said, you do it again, my friend, and this is gonna get at your throat. Get out of my presence. Slams the door. David Wilkerson. A little bit more urgency this time. Standing, full prison. Why? Because he believes in Jesus Christ. He was baptized into the family and his life's not a threat. If I live for the Lord, if I die for the Lord, I belong to the Lord. But this kid doesn't, so I'm gonna help him. Opens the door and Nicky Cruz, he, goes, he pulls him up like this. He puts his flick knife at his neck. He says, one, two, he says, in three seconds, I'm gonna cut you into a thousand pieces. You know what David Wilkinson said? And every single piece of me will scream, Jesus loves you. Woo. Church, you're out of business. The devil got you up by the scruff of your neck. I'm gonna pull this thing down this week. I'm gonna rob you of everything you ever dreamed of. And whether I live or die, devil, Everything I do is to the glory of the Lord. You're walking a journey with your children. I'm telling you, you feel like your children have been lost from your grip. You feel like God has lost His hand on their lives. It can be scary. I speak to friends whose children are deep in the world of drugs and darkness and they don't know what to do and they don't know what to say. It's like the devil's got you up at your throat saying, I'm gonna cut your life into a thousand pieces. And I want you to just tell the devil straight back. And whether they end up on the streets or whether they end up in heaven, everything about me, all thousand pieces that you try and cut me up into are all declaring the goodness and the glory of God. I'm his family. You cannot take that away from me. And you cannot take my children out of his hand. You do not hear, church, because you do not belong. Because every single time the devil puts his hand in your face, you retract and you start listening to small earthly father's voices that have no authority in your life and you start to bias toward the ways of the world. You start to act like people that aren't actually part of the family. You start to stand at a distance and everyone else is better. And the invitation today is quite simple. Come and be present in the presence of God. Stand strong in the identity of your heavenly father and no matter what comes against you, let your life declare all thousand pieces of it that Jesus loves the world around you. Come on, let's close our eyes. Father, I thank you that right now in this room, there's a shift of faith happening. That's what I feel. I feel a shift of faith happening, God. A shift from flesh to faith. A shift from flesh 
what I bring to this church, what I bring to this table, what I bring to my business, what I bring to my family, there's a shift happening and the shift is in faith. I am a child of God. My family are born into a saved reality because of my life. And Father, I pray right now that you would stir up a flame in the hearts of your church. I believe there are people that are staring down the devil's lies, are staring down the devil's threats to cut their life into pieces over their children and over their businesses and over their marriages. And I declare right now, God, whether we live, whether we die, the outcome is yours, God. Obedience is ours, the outcome is yours. And I declare, God, that there'll be a shift of faith in your church, God. That as we step into the week ahead of us, God, that we would step in even with the greatest sense of purpose, a greater sense of identity, a greater sense of this is my family's business. I'm not about the businesses of this world. I'm not about impressing people. I'm not even about bottom lines. I'm about bringing glory to my Father who's in heaven. And so we do speak the name Jesus, God, over broken lives. We speak the name Jesus over dark and dying streets, God. We speak the name Jesus over this nation, God, and the doubts and the frustrations and the depressions and the anxieties. And we speak the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus calls us into family. And we declare a day of faith and hope in Jesus' mighty name.